Warning, this podcast contains samurais. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC Not TV podcast for Westworld season one finale, episode ten, the bicameral mind. I'm yours, Dom. With me, we have Mike. Uh, that would be John, uh, and uh, and Nikki. How's Hi. it going? Good. I just want to say really quick with my theory about Teddy being wet. I was so close. You I were. was like, I was just this a little were, bit more. You were really, really close. So close. My long shot was right. Yeah? That Maeve was being controlled by Ford. <laughs> mm. Do we know that, though? We don't. Um, we don't. We don't know that for sure, but he's, like, the most obvious choice for that. Because this was, like, a really high-level, like, you know, login and stuff. It was really complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Short of Bernard, who else was you know right, was so, capable of it? So I guess let let's start with with uh, what we we knew. Um, Man in Black, William, right? Mm-hmm. For let's for about a minute, yes. Let's get that out of the way. But for a minute of that speech, the way he was leading Dolores on, I'm like, oh my god, is this actually Logan? Is like he just like gonna be like you know, William's dead little girl, or something like that? And then I'm like, oh no, it's actually William. He's just fucking with her. Mm. His, like, breakdown of how he got to the way he was was just devastating for me. I was like, oh, no. Like, I expected it to happen over the years that he was visiting the park, but it just seemed to happen, like, as soon as Dolores went missing. And yeah. then, you know, it just kind of con- got concreted in as the years went by because he kept looking for her. And then when he realized that she was gonzers and she just he'd well, never get the old Dolores back then he just likes it fuck it to me it seemed like that whole thing played out and he just kept searching for and searching for her and when he went to go back to the hub which he gets on the train in town uh when he got back to t- town to like give up and go home is when Dolores was just standing in the park doing her regular routine so it's like oh she was here the whole time kind of so it's mm-hmm. not like he kept coming back and finding her there it's he found her there before he left that it was from that first it was more like he he kept coming back and i think there was a little bit of hope inside of him that you know something would trigger and there would be a memory of him other, but he it never ever happened that way yeah uh huh so yeah uh is i don't think us finding out earlier ruined the reveal i i still think the reveal was done really really good and in the case of Mike, it, it still left some doubt. So, um, mm-hmm. well, but like I said, you know, I was like, okay, we're getting his, you know, identity revealed. Just the way he was talking, I'm like, ah, uh, nah, just one last curveball. Thank you, show yeah. creators. I mean, I wish I didn't find this out, you know, beforehand mm. through through our like crazy kind of. Uh, intuition whatever i wish that i was like part of the uh the ride that i found out along with you know dolores and i i wish that i knew what that felt like because i i feel like that would have been just a mind-blowing reveal um i you know they just been making it so obvious you know yeah, it's like kind of it would you would have really had to not been paying attention to not see it coming at this point. Yeah. Well, it's even going back and watching um, uh, uh, Arnold, uh, not Arnold, um, Bernard. You go back and watch Bernard now, knowing that he was a robot the whole time. You go back and watch some of these other episodes, and it's very obvious. Like some of the stuff that they threw in our face, where you know he goes, oh. You know, when when the uh, they talk, when the, the robots talk to themselves, you know, it's like they're practicing. Um, and you, you hear her, um, Teresa, go, is that what you're doing right now? You know, it's almost as if to say, you know, you're a robot and you're practicing. Like, all this stuff was in all these earlier episodes that was set up. And, yeah, there was just way too many things. Uh, one of the things we didn't mention, uh, I forgot to mention uh, last week, was uh, the knife. The knife that we see... William have is the same knife that the man in black was using uh, this whole mm-hmm. time. Um, but mm-hmm. we didn't find that knife 
until that that very end you know with with william in that that particular scene that's the first time we've seen him with it uh and that mm -hmm. was just further proof you know so but um i guess let's get on to um i want i want to talk about maven a little bit but let's dolores right we were trying to figure out who who why it was this whole time mm -hmm. and nikki was really close was she, so she was the closest, I think, out of anybody. Um, and uh, we just kind of agreed with her, you know. Because it was a better theory than any of us really came up with. It was a better theory than, hey, that guy that Lee's working on is Wyatt, because that didn't seem right, you know. And then I think the other the other three of us were kind of un under the impression that, it, that um, it was somebody we hadn't seen yet. And then I, was, I, I don't remember if I mentioned it last week or the week before. I was like... It's got to be somebody important because they wouldn't just like hide the reveal, you know. And that's what mm -hmm. Nikki, I think, was like, "Yeah, it's uh, um, Teddy." Mm -hmm. And we're like, "Yeah, maybe that sounds good. That sounds good." So we just kind of went with that, and it turned out to be Dolores. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by this. Mm -hmm. Yep, they uh, unveiled a lot with that. Yep, and uh, with with that. Uh, we find out Dolores did, in fact, you know, kill Arnold, um, and she, she knew what the maze was this whole time. But, more or less, yeah. Yeah, more or less, it was just she, getting all the pieces stuck together. She mm -hmm. understood what it was, but she didn't achieve it. She didn't achieve the center. She knew what the maze was, but she didn't achieve the center. Mm -hmm. um, and this whole, you know, kind of story played out, and the man in black has been told many times that the maze was not made for him, but he didn't accept that. He wanted to get to the center of, you know, like, you know, Arnold's game as he saw it, like something way deeper than any of, uh... I think he actually thought it was an actual fucking maze. No, I th <laughs> maybe at like... first, but... I was hoping it was, to be honest. Yeah. Well, technically it was. Well, that little toy. I don't, I don't count the toy. I mean, like mm -hmm. a hedge mage, like something yeah. that's just, you know, it's gigantic and just overwhelmingly huge. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what he was expecting. But, I mean, really, you know, we get a whole reveal over how his character went dark side fast and all that stuff. And then just like for him, the reveal that. I spent 30 years of my life. I bought this company. I've been coming here constantly trying to get deeper and deeper. And I finally get it. And so look at that. I just wasted all my time. More or less. No, you didn't. More or less. You know, because his goal now at this point was just to find the maze. It wasn't what we thought it was and trying to get Dolores out of the park or, you know, achieve, uh, you know, um, free will for Dolores, you know, it wasn't anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, it was more of just figuring out what the hell this thing was. Um, right. So, yeah, he kind of did waste his time. If it was for Dolores, then no, he would have done, you know, he would have achieved exactly what he set out to do, but no, he pretty much wasted his time. I mean, as far as the whole, like, when Arnold was first working with Dolores, like, she came basically she came to the center of it like pretty damn quick it seemed like she was just right there like you know one step further and she would have been like conscious or however yeah and i don't know I, I, this whole thing i like i'm sitting here like was ford the good guy the whole time <laughs> no ford was still a dick <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get into that in a bit cuz i want i want to save that but yeah. um with dolores in particular um, we find out she she is talking to herself the whole time. So she did. She achieved free will. Um, mm -hmm. She got what Arnold had, had set out to do. Uh, and we see, you know, there's scenes where she's talking to herself. It's not Arnold that she thought she was talking to. She's been talking to herself this whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was really cool to see. Um, but one question that was answered for me um, that we had a discussion about uh, last episode, I think it was. Um, we see Dolores being built for the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she has nothing other than her robot skeleton. So she does not require blood or any of these other things to function. She's able to, to walk around. 
So I'm going to assume all the other robots are the same way. They like they do not function off of blood. I believe based on what I've seen, I think the older, like the first generation of them are all like her. Yeah. But we've seen a couple of pretty like, you know, like at the beginning of this episode, we see a new body being printed for Maeve. They put together an actual like 3D printed skeleton mm. that they then, you know, printed her body out of. Mm. Like, you know, so yeah, for Dolores and maybe a couple of generations after her, yeah, fine. Pure android with skin cover, realistic skin covering it. Doesn't need blood, doesn't need any of that shit. It's all clever programming. I mean, they don't need the blood. The blood is there for, you know, for looks. So when Ooh. they do get shot, it gets shot. Like, and like, well. I don't think it actually, like, I don't think they need it to keep moving or to keep Unless it's lubricant or coolant or something like that. Wait, 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 because didn't Teddy almost die when he was bleeding out, and then the I Man think... in Black gave him a transfusion from Lawrence, and he got back up and was okay? I think so... some of that, though, is programming. You know, I don't know what level that they, you know, it's, well, it's still a okay. fine line here. But, like... Technically, he doesn't need blood, but his programming says he does, so... His right. core programming yeah. is difference. probably it's like... Fine. Right, okay, if it, if... but I'm saying if their programming was changed or they were brought in from maintenance mode... Like, like, for example, what if Maeve got a hold of them? I was like, Pff, you can get shot and lose every ounce of blood in your body, but you'll still wake up kind of thing. You know, I think mm -hmm. Maeve can function that. I think they're still able to walk around after that. Um, yeah. You know, things like that. So, but at least we know with Dolores. Uh, so first gen robots, all those we know do not need that to function. Um, it's still kind of questionable. It's gray area. I personally don't think they need it for, for everything after first gen, but... It's possible that they do. So, um, I mean, it one. I mean, we can get to that later, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'll we'll get to that later. Just go on. Yeah, sorry. Um, so you guys were talking about Ford's narrative and everything, and we see Ford's master plan at work here. He knew he was getting pushed out. Right? He knew this from the start, mm -hmm. and all of those robots that were were decommissioned. He woke them all up, reprogrammed them, turned them into killing machines. So yeah, my um, yeah, pretty much that whole thing, like when Teddy finally finds Dolores, they're having that emotional whatever. Like he's holding her, and she dies in his arms, and I'm just like, oh my god, what the hell is going on here? That all of a sudden spotlights and applause, and there's the whole board of directors and Ford, and I'm just like. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> was my exact reaction at that moment. Because I thought, you know, this whole story of, at that point, Dolores's like, quest for consciousness and everything, I thought it was all just a clever part of his new narrative. Which, I mean, it kind of was, a little bit. I mean, it's, it's but questionable, I thought we were being too. Like, it's questionable how far, like, his, his new narrative is going, you know? Like, his, so... His narrative is basically to reestablish control, and it's kind of to do what Arnold did, you know? Arnold died, but not without getting, you know, his reverie coding in, and we find out that Ford never pushed the reverie update, right? Mm -hmm. That's something Ford it's never did. Happening. It's been just happening on its own. Um, and Over time. Yeah, so there's either, you know, it was possibly Bernard that was slipping this in, you know, un unaware because it kind of has almost Ford's conscience and, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, Arnold's conscience, you know, I know it was programmed by Ford and everything, but that, but it was, it was programmed in Arnold's likeness and we've seen it disobey Ford at least on one occasion. And we've heard that it's done right. it multiple times. So it's like possible he said, he started you know, reverting to that. Yeah. He said there were a few, you know, hosts over the years that like, reach that level of consciousness yeah and so it, went insane it's but it's possible bernard's been doing it in arnold's name kind of thing without or being aware. it's just possible it took that many times that many resets and like going through you know just for each like layer of memories to build up to the point where you know the host can piece it all together like dolores did so yeah all this chaos and, though is is basically ford trying to reestablish control Right, and also it goes what Ford said to Dolores, like at the end, before you know 
the big finale there. Um, like he tells her, like Arnold didn't know how to save you, uh, like or is that what he said? How to help you or how to save you? I forget the how wording he you. used. How to help you? He's like, I do, and you know, he, like, kind of, sort of, thirty years too late, apologizes ish. Like you know, I I made a mistake. I was wrong. Like, then well, it drove. Said, Arnold um, Ford said something about you know a great man. Um, fixes his mistakes after 10 years and stuff like that. He's like, I took 30 something years. Oh yeah. He said, I, um, if whatever, they it's say, like an ego boost or whatever. I don't know. They say it's like, excuse <laughs> if it takes 10 years to fix a man's mistake, he must be a great, you know, that must've been one hell of a man basically. Mm-hmm. You know, my mistakes took 30 years to fix. Yeah. And I'm thinking he means his mistakes were not listening to Arnold. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing after he realized that he's just been biding his time for, all of these years waiting well, for think... one of these hosts to just start showing that little glimmer of. Well, I think part of it was he didn't he didn't believe Arnold, right? He didn't right. believe that Dolores had achieved um, uh, free Full will, consciousness, yeah. yeah, some sort of free will, because she wasn't completely free willed. Yeah, he didn't believe I mean, that. She still... So he reset her and, and sent her back out, and you know they mm-hmm. did all that. But Arnold one hundred percent knew it, um, and Ford didn't, and it took till now. I think for Ford to realize that, you know, so, um, yeah, I don't know. But my question is now, who the hell is still alive? Like this massacre, we see, we see William get his arm broken, right, and then he takes two bullets. (laughs) He got blasted. Can we just say how awesome that is? That after (laughs) thirty years of tormenting her, Dolores just destroys him in the graveyard. Oh God. Fantastic. He must have been really turned on, but he didn't have any kind of juice. To... I think he was partially terrified. No, no way. Because I he's think been he fucking was really with these excited hosts. About that. Well, he's been fucking with these hosts for years, and it's like you know, we're you're programmed to lose. Basically, there's no, it's not real. There's no challenge to it. And he had to, hey, guess what? I'm just gonna break your arm and possibly dislocate your shoulder at the same time. The reason why I say he was excited is because in that last scene where he gets his arm blasted. The actual, like, grin on his face was just pure enjoyment. It was. So I I just, I feel like he was just like, finally. And, like, you know, the, the Dolores thing, yeah, was kind of a surprise. It was a shock. But, like, it kind of kicked in when he finally he got really hurt. Well, that him, he's like, yes, this is this is the way it's supposed to be. With him, like, he the, the magic was lost on him at that point. Like, he, he saw this place as somewhere where he could be a god. And he be, he's even said that on, on one mm-hmm. occasion. You know, in this world, I'm a god. Um, and you see, they shoot him and, they you know, the bullets just whatever. You know, sure, they'll punch him, they'll knock him out here and there. But he's still not in any harm you know, and he's, he's not an danger. he's not an actual real danger. Yeah, no. and now he gets to experience that for real. You know, so it was kind of like this moment of aha. You know, like here we go. This is what I've been looking for. You know, that here's here's a new thing for me. Yeah. So oh look, there's hundreds of hosts in the tree lines. One of them just shot me. Do you do you guys? Clementine think, shot him. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys? Think, I don't know uh, if he's Williams that, but... alive at this point. Like going into season two. I, d- I mean, yeah. if if yes, I'm gonna say yes right now. Going into season two, if he's not dead, they will show him dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Episode one. And I don't think that's gonna happen. I think he's gonna be around, and he's gonna be able to see all the other parks that they have see, building we'll and land. I, yes, don't I don't know. know if William is still alive. We may see him in flashbacks, or we may see him, like you know, Nikki just said, get killed in the first episode. Um, I have no idea how they're doing it. I know that Ed Harris has signed on for season two, okay. for sure. Mm-hmm. But you know, his level—he's like you know—his level of involvement is unknown. Yeah, we just um, know that he is signed on. In fact, the his level of involvement involvement was unknown. Uh, going into this, uh, the actor who plays William and the actor who played the Man in Black, Ed Harris, um, they didn't work on set at all together, and they had no clue until they filmed the last episode that they were playing the same character. So they didn't even know on set. Uh, the actor who played William had an idea. Um, he said when... Uh, he was doing, when they were doing makeup, 
they asked him a question that he found rather strange, and they asked him uh, if they could pluck some hairs out of his eyebrows to give him um, a different kind of, uh, like, brow, you know, like a, a pattern, you know, whatever, like more of a, a, a lift or a scowl or something, I forget what they said. Um, and he goes, he's saying, he's thinking to himself, the only reason that they would ask to do something like that is if they're trying to make him look like someone else. So... He said it wasn't until they they started filming the third episode that when he saw the can or whatever with uh, Dolores and he's like why am he's like why am I picking up a can uh, and interacting with the main character aka Dolores um, mm-hmm. as this kind of minor character you know whatever that, that's off on this side plot um, and. You know, he said the only other character that filmed something like that was the Man in Black, and that's when he realized it. So he figured it out before anyone else on set. So I think that was fantastic. Um, huh. But yeah. So as far as your question of who else is alive, um, not a lot. I don't well, think a lot of them are. Elsie, Elsie, and Ashley are probably alive. Yep. I'm gonna. Assume, We've never. I'm gonna assume that they were both kidnapped by the natives because you know we got no reveal from Ashley. We no, no. information, none, zero Nothing. zip. The last he got, he got tackled by a Ghost Nation warrior, and that's the last we saw of him. Right. Yeah. And the last we saw of Elsie but is went, you know he went going out looking for um Elsie's mm-hmm. location Dang, device, yeah. which, which, which uh, was out there in the middle of the field. Right. right. And the last we saw of her was her getting a um you know a basically a chokehold by Bernard. Right, but we don't know if he actually killed her or not. Right, exactly. Bernard thinks he did. He doesn't even remember. But he doesn't remember. He only remembers, you know, I think he only got that little flash of him actually chokeholding her, and that's all he got, mm-hmm. so he is, he's assuming that he killed her. Yeah. So, it's completely possible that the two of them um, are together. <laughs> And, and alive um mm-hmm. logan like granted we haven't seen him at all in, in the present timeline um yeah. we've only seen him in the flashback and the, and the last we saw him here he was stripped naked uh tied up on a horse sent to run out yeah. into the wild mm-hmm. and the way william said like uh, oh you've always been kind of you know i forgot the word he used unpredictable or like outlandish or something basically uh, what I think William did there was make it seem like Logan, who I think was, you know, either CEO or next in line to be CEO of uh, Delos, uh, make him seem like he had some kind of mental breakdown by, mm-hmm. you know, they reached the edge of the park. He put him on a horse naked and, you know, had him ride off. So, you know, wherever the park is, if that was the edge, he's going to now probably run into like someone else's property naked on a into horse. Into another park. If who knows, that could have been the edge edge going off into you well, know. According to the the uh, Delios map uh, that mm-hmm. they've shown, there's no route to connect uh, the sub tunnels to other parks. Um, so we got to be under an impression that there's separate hubs for those. So I, I don't believe that they are um, bordering each other like they were in the movie. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's a thing. and. I see Cleo in chat saying, I assume for William to take over, he would have to kill him. Not necessarily. If he made him seem like he had some kind of mental or emotional breakdown, he, he, did he mention, could have forced the board to vote him out. He did mention that he's like, I don't think your father would hand the company to somebody who's so mentally unstable. Right, that too. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, yes, that was the whole point, to make him seem like he was having a psychotic break. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. Uh, also possibility Ford's still alive. Um, and you're gonna be like, what? But that could have been a robot he sent out there. That I may have not been say, him that, that was executed. Was, well, yep. right, because he was making a host. So that could have just been him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was making I mean, a host. That could have been, a, yeah, you're right. He could have just made a clone of himself. Yep. You know, so it, it is I mean, he made a clone of Arnold. possible that... Also, another thing I like to chat here... I see. Huh. Yeah, the um there's something John linked in chat for Yeah, so she's alive. 
Well, this, hmm. this is the same thing. This is why Ashley went to go out and investigate. This is the same thing he saw. Yep. So yep. that doesn't mean necessarily that, that she's alive. It just means that her tablet ended up out there. Yep. Um. So I I'm want hoping to believe she's alive. I'm hoping. I want her to be alive. But I'm just <laughs> saying it, that, that does, that's not confirmation that she is. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So that was... Let me show you. Because this the, the rabbit hole... She runs deep, but um, basically they translated this out of code and stuff like that on the website that they, that got updated just as this, ep this last episode ended. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I, I I take that as a pretty heavy-handed like. Yeah. Well, because this is dead. saying this is saying here that uh, Ford uh, never Ford said that he never had Bernard kill somebody before, um, which if he was telling the truth, that means Elsie was not killed. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, no, there there's definitely more reason for her to be alive than not be alive. But I'm just stating that the tablet oh yeah, just yeah. does not mean that yeah. she's, she is alive. Um, but with that, with Ford so possibly sure. being alive as well. I'm hoping because I really enjoyed Anthony Hopkins. I want him back in oh, season two. Yeah. Um, now, go ahead. But that would kind of leave, uh, what, Lee Sizemore in charge right now if everybody else is dead in there? Like, Charlotte, too. Like, is Charlotte alive? I mean, we, didn't, we didn't see her die. We didn't see any, like, you know, Dolores started opening fire on the board, <laughs> the board of directors. Which I just want to throw out there that board is huge. Yeah. I mean, if it's that big of a company, it's possible. Yeah. And it's an expensive p company, too. It's not like, you know, it doesn't... But keep and I mean, mind... William can't own, like, 60% of that company. No, That's a lot William of is money. the majority shareholder. He owns he is... at least 51%. Right, but they could also be other major shareholders, as in, you know, for a company that big, owning 1% or 2% is still a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... I mean, if all of those other people owned a half or one percent, you know, stake in the company, they're probably going to get them, you know, some kind of say yeah. or some kind of voice on the board. Yep. Yeah. And now they're all being shot dead and there is a army of hosts waiting in the trees because they're on a cliffside. They got nowhere else to go but back towards the woods. Mm -hmm. Well, Bernard is still going to be kicking because he's a host and they know uh -huh. it. So... If all the rest of them, just say all it's, of them, other like Lee is, he's still in the actual hub. He's screwing around, like all his, all he, he's the one who noticed that all of the dudes and the, the chickies that were decommissioned were gone. He was supposed to go in there and get Abernathy, mm -hmm. but they all gone. <laughs> Which, mind you, we did not see Abernathy at all. We do not know if he made it onto the train. Uh, we don't know anything. The only one we saw get on the train was Maeve, and she got right the hell back off. Yeah. See, now, and this this is going to bring up a whole... Uh, first, hold on. Lee Sizemore. He's he's still alive. He's in the, yeah. the uh, warehouse Cold where storage. they all were, and, and they're not there. And he's just like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, you know, and he's sitting there dumbfounded. Um, I'm under the impression that Abernathy is part of Ford's narrative uh, and never made it to the train, but I could be wrong. Because it Possibly. seemed like he was going there for Abernathy. Like, why else would he be going there? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what... Uh, right. Uh, he, Abernathy had all the information that they needed to get smuggled out. Right. So, that was Lee's job. Right. So, that's why Charlotte, I think he so. went there. So, I think that implies that he never got onto the train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But, is basically, Charlotte was setting him up to kind of be the new Ford. Kind um, of. And if the board is gone, does that leave Lee, you know, in charge now? Who knows what the hell it leaves? I think the hosts are in charge now. Yeah. Like, that was, <laughs> hey, I mean, that was his whole thing. That was Ford's entire thing. Like, you know, the world is not TL, theirs. TLDR, Westworld is yours. Yeah. Like, yeah. to the hosts. Like, have fun with it. Okay. More importantly. Now, okay, this was my thing, you know, that Ford was the good guy and all that, and... Well, we can talk. I hope we're talking about Maeve more soon here. I'm just gonna say, okay. I save Maeve for last because this was my favorite part of the entire episode. Right now, my whole thing, you know, when she finds out that her she's being programmed complexly to do all of this, 
to break out to alter her own programming and like personality to do all the shit. You know, it, Bernard obviously shows it to her. This makes me think, you know, because the end of la- last episode, Ford has Bernard kill himself, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you know, to th- if Ford was programming Maeve to do all this, he could have known that she would stumble upon Bernard's body and fix him. And the other thing is, when he's talking to Dolores, Bernard's standing there. Like, you know, he just walked in. And Ford looks at him and goes, isn't that right, my old friend? Like, you know, not surprised at all that he's standing there. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I made you put a bullet in your own skull. And, oh, you're standing here just fine, walking and talking. Nothing's out of the ordinary. I'm going to go out of the limb and say that Elsie found out a lot of shit when she got kidnapped. And she's in some sort of special hub that they have all over the freaking park. She found out that she's got even higher, say, than Ford. And she's the one that's like, you know what? Elsie seemed like Bernard's lackey, so I I don't think she's got more she, uh, she knows clearance she's than do- other people. I'm saying she that she found a place. Though. Exactly. I'm, I just want to, like... Say like, cause I believe that she's alive, but I don't think Ford was the one that programmed Maeve. I don't know. It's either Arnold's programming overwriting everything from the very get go, or it is somebody who found a back door to the back door to the back door and is doing it from an, a very res- like think, resolute, I mean, sorted place. I think whoever from- this is is no one we've met yet, and I think this is going to set up a big plot for season two. I think yeah, it's possible yeah. there but my thought for ford also is you know when bernard's reading off everything you know you were programmed to do you know to be able to wake up here you were programmed to change your own personality make alterations make alterations to the other hosts and then escape and once in you know the outside world and that's when mave cuts him off like he looks shocked like you know you're supposed to and then she's like no my decisions are on my own well, like no. well, what, she what does was know. said what was said was that she was programmed to do all this stuff and then when she got on the train, that, and that's when she cut him off. Oh, okay. I thought he said when you got to get to the mainland. No, and when that's you get where she to cut the him train. off. Mm-hmm. And that leaves us with, did she get off the train because she was programmed to, or did she get off the train for her own free will? That, that is the question. That seems to be her biggest conflict throughout this whole, like, right. episode, was, you know, my daughter's alive, and it's like, she was never my daughter. I was never her mother. And then she gets on the train, and it's like, yeah, she's my daughter. And right. like, but now is that because of programming, or is that because of free will? We don't know. We still don't know. No, we don't. You know. Also, and... quick side note, Felix, my man. I'm so glad yeah. he's still alive. My man. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> glad. I would have been really upset if he died. I was waiting for her to like just be like. Thank you, Felix, for all you've done, pal. Wait, no, Ford's a no. robot, so I'm... <laughs> no! So Bernard's a robot? Bernard. Does that mean... Am I? Is that... Yeah, I no, know. You're... It, was, but... it was adorable, because the way Maeve looked at him, she was like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, I see spots in us. chat says that the mainland was mentioned as part of her journey. Yeah, it was mentioned that it was yeah. her journey, okay. but when she got to the train, and that that's what she cut off. So, like... And then, because I was like, okay, what happens now when she gets to the train? Because I'm like, what? this is her programming, and then we see the confliction. Because Felix handed her um, a note, and it gave coordinates. It said Park 1, and then, you know, some latitude, longitude, all this this stuff, the actual, like, precision Park locations. One, but, sectors, zone, all that shit. Is Park 1 Westworld, right? We don't even know if Park 1 is Westworld. I mean, sure. the impression we've been given is that Westworld... Like, Arnold and, you know, Ford created Westworld. They created the hosts for Westworld. So, based on available evidence, one can infer that Westworld was the first park. Does that mean it has p- the designation Park 1? No. Probably not. It, it could, might probably is going to be Park be Zero. Westworld could be designated as Park Zero. Yeah, exactly. That's likely what it is. And Park 1 is whatever they did next. Could it be Shogun World? Could it be Futuristic World? Could it be Medieval World or Ancient Greek World? I don't know. I'm 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 I mean, thinking we saw, that we it, saw the samurai she's shogans. not in Westworld. Could it be Super Mario World? No, no, <laughs> no. John's face. It's more likely that it's Jurassic World, but um, even that. 
<laughs> they made robot horses. Michael made Crichton robot wrote both both of the stories. You know, I know. As long he as likes... Jimmy Buffett's there. Yeah, right. Oh, but no, God. like, uh, so we we see the the SW, and then they go in, and then we see the Shoguns or the Samurais or whatever. You know, one of the two, whatever the park is named after. I, I love Maeve's reaction. What is this? This is complicated. So now the other option is that we get all new characters and a whole new story for season two that doesn't involve much of Westworld and may have some crossovers. Because if if Maeve finds out her daughter is in fact in Shogun World, this could be the new setting of the park. Mm -hmm. Um, If the other park was completely wiped out and they're in control and they're running the place and there's no humans left to go there, there's really no reason to to see what's going on in Westworld anymore. That doesn't mean Westworld's going to be completely abandoned. It's just going to mean we see less of it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I know in the uh, the movie, in the sequel, Future World, uh, Westworld was in fact abandoned after the park went haywire. Uh, they reopened uh, Medieval World and the uh, um, Roman World. They reopened those uh, they opened up uh, like a spa world. There were there were all different you know kinds of things going on there, um, and Westworld was just abandoned. So I mean, as far as company interests go, they could probably still just you know technically abandon Westworld, especially if the hosts are taking over it. And it depends on and how if... far in that they've had these other parks, you know, these other projects, because it looks like they're pretty deep into development for Samurai Shogun World. Mm-hmm. If it's not even op- if it's not opened already, yeah, we really don't know. That, yeah, that is don't. true because uh, spots. I see spots in chat says the note uh, says the daughter was in park one, so I assume that means other worlds are in operation now. Right. Mm-hmm. If you have the designations already set, it's possible. It's probable that others are in operation. Yeah, and Cleo yeah. Uh, earlier on uh, was asking. Um, where where um where is the park is it man-made in the ocean or something or is it in the north american continent um in the movies at least it was just kind of out in the middle of nowhere um they they took a hover Mm -hmm. craft uh to it and it seemed like it was out in the desert you know um somewhere that included uh medieval world and roman world um that were Mm. it was kind of like a trifecta uh, area that they had natural borders and stuff off of that you could have wandered into the other parks, but you had to cross like really far uh, out of the way places and, and actually traverse a river um, to mm-hmm. to to get to. So it's possible the parks are bordering each other, um, and, and it's possible that the only way there is through its own separate hub where you have to go, you know, take a, a different tram or something there. Um, yeah. I would imagine they're bordering each other because, you know, they're going through, like, the bowels of Westworld's hub and they wind up in, you know, Samurai World's hub. And it's also completely (sighs) plausible that these places are all completely underground um, with simulated atmospheres and and all that. That's Um, true. You know, we we don't know because we know know the tram is underground, right? Mm -hmm. But we know it goes up, so we're going to assume it goes to surface level. Uh, We've seen all the elevators go up. So we're going to assume they go to surface level, but surface level for the park may still be 100 feet underground. I just feel like in comparison to the movie, this Westworld is so vast in comparison. Oh, like, this, it's this huge. This park is at least 10 times the size of Westworld in the movie. Uh, so I, I don't see... think, like, I, I know, like, just because the movie is always in my mind that they're, I just assume that they're bordering, but I don't think they are. I think... If they happen to be on Earth or underground, or they're in other places of the world. And like I actually think, like somewhere world is in East Asia. Maybe. I mean, I see spots in chat says that Evan Rachel Wood or Dolores said in an interview that Westworld was as large as a continent. Yeah. So. Hmm. Smallest continent is, as far as I know, Europe. And that's pretty friggin' big. Cleo, with the logic here, maybe it's on a space station somewhere. There's that, too. You know, a a space station. Maybe at this point in time, we have terraformed Mars or something, and that's where it's at. It could be, but that just 
I feel like it's on Earth. I feel like it is. Whether it's underground, above ground, I, I'm not sure. But it feels they would have more shown the transportation because for for um, Maeve's storyline, it would have been less of a threat to, to be like, oh, well, she's got to get on the train and then go to a space station and then wait in the space station for another train and like you you think like we, the further that the, the moon is in the sky, we know it's on Earth. It could Unless be it's a projection, yeah, but. Like, the the further out you go with, with the more, you know, it seems like the more protection that they would have, the more countermeasures in place to make sure that these robots didn't go off. Like, the same countermeasure that prevents the gun from shooting, uh, you know, a host, or prevents it from shooting a, a tourist versus a host, would be in place in a space station to make sure that nothing ever got that far out, you know? I don't know. You would, and that could so. explain why they need to allow pyrotechnics. Like, we have a request for a pyrotechnic effect, you know, and God forbid there's a hole breach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So, just this fun side note mm-hmm. the hosts are coded in JavaScript. Great. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. You're going to you're gonna tell me that they used a what is currently considered an obsolete code? <laughs> or an obsolete code? You know, Coding language. That's yeah, so right, hey, man. There's better. <laughs> Great. So, wow. No wonder. All right. So now <laughs> I know that in order to um, no wonder they're rebelling. Yeah. No shit. Well, look at at the bottom. It says mainland infiltration under Maeve's code. So yeah, mm-hmm. that is the thing. Yep. And she didn't do it. And Arnold's name is mentioned there. Where it says manipulate. Yeah. It's under coerce as well. Coerce, yeah. It's all Arnold data, yeah, so. Yeah, deceive. I see it there as well. Hidden yep. data file. No. W, it looks like... W dot Arnold. And is that a... Is the, are those dates? Like that 2.1.04? Like, you know, I don't know. It's probably something there that we could probably understand if we knew coding. 2.1.04 like, but... dat... Nah. No, the 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 dats are I just. I think that's just file It's not names. date. Those are um, those are data, data files. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're data files. Yeah. So um, it just seems like those are her programming, like the actual. That is the coerce database. That's the narrative yeah, for that. Da- you know. Yeah. Well, if they are running on Java, that's why they have all the memory leaks. So. <laughs> okay, here's the other thing. If the new generation of hosts aren't almost completely biological, why do they have heart rates and, you know, blood oxygen levels and respiration rates and all that shit? Like why would you need to know the oxygen level of a robot's blood if it's not pretty much fully biological or a cyborg? Yeah. That's actually really interesting, that coding right there. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. (laughs) Cleo, don't... She don't believe it. She can't. She can't even. Fucking Java, get the hell out of here. (laughs) Uh, Will they invade the real world at some point? Um, Spots, I definitely think that is going to happen. Um, Invade or just just try to... Quite as soon as Acclimate. we want it to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to happen as soon as we want it to because, with the exception of Maeve and uh, Hector, and I'm going to assume the blonde, they all have char- explosive charges in their spines. Did, did you guys stick around for the post credit scene, by the way? Yee. Yeah, the post credit scene when uh, <laughs> the snake lady um, had her arm trapped in the door and she cut it off. And, and there was to no laugh map. maniacally. Yeah, that was a that was an actual arm. Like you know, there was no metal in there, no exoskeleton, no nothing like that, no endoskeleton or whatever. Mm. It was just you know, actual blood and bone off. and tendon, and she just cut her fucking arm off, mm. and then smiled, laughed maniacally, and like charged you know, freeze all motor functions like. Sh- she just took out how many of you QA guys? Shoot first. Fucking morons. She was still shooting them, somehow aiming her arm through the door. That was that one was she, pretty good. 
in order to get her finger to move, she stabbed the knife in her arm and like and kind of and, yeah, she like yeah, and then she <gasps> she pulled the tendon for her trigger finger. I was what? I mean, she's okay. I'm going to assume that they got rid of the um, programming for pain. That yeah. they got rid of, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Well, she cranked up her aggression and dropped their pain threshold. Uh huh. So they and were I like mean, ready to fight. And also, those fucking security guards are basically stormtroopers. Basically, yeah. Huh. I don't know. I just, I'm really excited uh, season two, but unfortunately, we may not be getting season two as early as we want it. Uh, from what they, they're talking about is they don't want to rush it, and we may not get season two until 2018. I'm yeah. perfectly fine with that. I, Me too. Take your goddamn time and make it phenomenal because then it'll be worth the wait. Yeah. Yes, I want it by next year, but I have no problem waiting at all. Zero. I can live with it. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if season two needs to be as good as season one, take all the time. Like, you know, because mm -hmm. they wrote this, they wrote this as a one season arc, right? They said that for sure. They wanted to finish up everything that they could, but they, they said they were going to leave hooks for season two. They definitely did. You know, mm -hmm. Ashley, where, where's Ashley? Elsie, is she alive? What the What's Maeve going on do? with the board? You know, Maeve, who programmed her? Did she achieve, you know, uh, self-awareness and, and, and all that? Did she get off on her own or was that programming? And Samurai World. Like, it, it's all, like, all these things left a huge hook for the next season. So, um, I don't know. I want it. Hmm. It's kind of like... Stranger Things, except that's not a you know one season arc. That's a continuation thing. But like you know, the the, the excitement of waiting for it, it's just it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just think about it here for a second. If any of these parks ever came out in the real world, and I know for the show it would be impossible to get the rights for this, but you're going to tell me that there wouldn't be like a Star Wars world or something that's like that. That's what Future for the World is, basically. Think of that's what Future World is. It's Living well, on a space station. I know, I'm not sure where it was, but it was at some convention kind of thing. There was a virtual reality Westworld experience where you went in, you put on a VR mask, and it took you through the park, but you, it was computer-generated um, park. And then at some point, things went bad. Hmm. And it shut down, and you woke up, and you were in the maintenance room to find out you were actually a robot. And it was no longer in CGI. It was shot with real footage with a 3D camera. And you were able to look around and everything and experience everything uh, and, and see how the story played out and everything. And it even went as far as the, the room had motion sensors and everything on a specific camera that was on a chair. And at one point, it asked you to sit down. Mind you, you're wearing a headset. Or, you know, you can't see where the chair is. And it just tells you to sit down. Where you were looking is exactly where the chair was. Um, <laughs> and you sat down, and it was a wheelchair. And then they navigated you and, and pushed you around and took you on a tour and stuff like that. Um, from everything I watched on it, it was absolutely insane. Um, I would love for... Uh, for to experience that, if, if it's something that we can get for a virtual reality helmet or something, would be really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah. And there, there was a, uh, an ARG uh, that existed out there as well um, that just kind of gave you some some extra insight into the park. Um, I think it was uh, something Delios.com uh, where you had to sign up and do that, and there's kind of like some hidden puzzles and stuff you had to solve to, to get some more information. Um I'm sure there's still secrets in that that haven't been found yet. So, um, I'm sure there's going to be more teases. And if we have to wait 
two years for for season two, expect some huge ARG to fill the gaps in. Maybe even a small web series. Um, mm-hmm. That'd so be like cool. It, yeah. It's not typical of HBO to do, but with a show like this, I think they're going to want to use every medium that they can uh, to keep people interested if it ends up being a two-year project. So. Mm-hmm. But, all in all, I think this is my new favorite show on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably yes. a lot of people's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, and if you have friends that have not even heard of Westworld, you make sure they sit down and at least watch the first episode. You sit them, tie them to the damn chair go and... Go to. <laughs> tell, tell them to get two at, in. At least two, yeah. Make sure tie they watch. I know a few people that watched it were not impressed on the first episode and the second episode. They were like, okay, the show's good. So Just yeah. make sure, make sure in. they absolutely watch because <sighs> they, if they enjoy TV shows, they're going to enjoy this. I know that yep. Westworld had the best premiere on HBO um, since I think it was True Detective. Um, and I don't even know when True Detective uh, came out. That was uh, a couple of years ago, 2014? 2014, yeah. Yeah, yeah must have been. Mm-hmm. Huh. So it's been the, the best opening premiere. Keep it going. Keep keep tuning in. Watch it. Oh. It was better than Game of Thrones. When HBO so. has... has Because I know just prior to season... Or the finale here, they did a whole marathon. Um, so you could have watched the whole season in one day if you wanted to. Um, I personally did not do that. But uh, when you see reruns on HBO... Tune in, watch them, uh, because you, you're going to catch a lot of stuff that you didn't catch the first time through. This is definitely a show you want to watch more than once to get everything. Um, yeah. And doing that is going to show HBO that, you know, the ratings are still phenomenal for the show, even though it's over. So, mm-hmm. um, But I think that about does it. Um, well, I see Spot says the first season uh, was said to be about control, second season about chaos. So... I, I mean, like I'm, chaos. I mean, there does um, the. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we could get they, Dr. Malcolm. There was, there was a lot of chaos even in the first season. So, well, can, can we get Jeff Goldblum still, to explain chaos theory? It was still the the, the host being <laughs> controlled. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of hoping, you know, since like the hosts are in charge now. I'm really hoping that the lady hosts are in charge now because they get pushed around more than anybody. So, Dolores deserves to be queen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, I, I really want to see where Maeve's story is going. Because um, she's, don't forget, she still has access to control everybody. All the hosts, you know, at, at this point. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But anyway, Mike, where can the people find you? On Twitter, at Thuladrin. Nothing clever to say. Mm. <laughs> John, where can the people find your magic wipes? <laughs> they're right in the bathroom actually um, I was waiting for no, it no excellent Nikki where can the people find you you can find me on twitter at ladyvenom24 ladyvenom24 and you can find me down below at phenomenon p-h-e-n-o-m-e-d-o-m you can find us all and more on facebook gmail g plus twitter MySpace. <laughs> And right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Until next time. Maybe Hopefully it'll be for two a years long now. time. I'm hoping it's not as long as it needs to be, but if it is, I'm still okay with it. Yep. Hi, Westworld. I miss you. <laughs> I'm going there right now. <laughs>